Tenakoto Katoa, ko Toku and Marie to few. Um, it's a real pleasure to welcome you here. Um, I am beaming into you from Wollongong, which is based on the indigenous lands belonging to the Darawa people. I want to acknowledge elders, past and present. Um, that sovereignty has never been ceded. And I acknowledge that this always was and always will be Aboriginal land. Also want to acknowledge any First Nations people who might be tuned in watching this from wherever you are. Thanks again for joining me. Um, uh, I am a senior producer at Red Room Poetry and all throughout August we have been uh, sharing with you various programs around our inaugural Poetry Month. Thank you so much to everyone who has engaged with, participated in, liked, shared, turned up for all of the various programs that um, have been a part of Poetry Month. Uh, there really is no Poetry Month without all of you participating. So from the Red Room team and myself, thank you. Um, and now to why we're here uh, for a very special showcase, which will feature some of Aotearoa's and so-called Australia's finest poets. So uh, this is the cusp of, we're on the verge of celebrating the Phantom Poetry Day in New Zealand, which happens on the 27th, August the 27th. So um, a massive happy Phantom Poetry Day um, to all, all Fano in New Zealand. Um, also want to thank um, Erica Stretton, who is at Phantom National Poetry Day. Um, thank you very much for um, everything you've done to help weave this showcase together. We really appreciate it. Thank you to you and your team. Um, we're going to start with uh, two finalists of the Mary and Peter Biggs Awards for poetry at the 2021 Ockham New Zealand Book Awards. <laughs> it's a mouthful of an award. Um, so first of all, we're going to hear from two incredible poets. Uh, the first is Hinamuana Baker reading from her collection titled Funk House, which was put out with Victoria University Press. And uh, following Hinamuana will be Nina Mingya Pals, who will be reading from her collection, her debut collection titled Magnolia, which was put out through Seraph Press. So let's get stuck into the poetry. Enjoy. Tēnā rā tātou katoa, ko Hini Moana Baker tēnei, e mihi atu ana ki katoa. Uh, I'm Hini Moana, I'm here in Berlin recording this for you. Uh, I've lived here for five years and I actually have ancestry from here, from Britain as well and Australia. And I also hail from uh, the tribes of Ngāti Raukawa, Ngāti Tō Rangatira, Te Aotearoa and Kaitahu in beautiful Aotearoa. Very heartbroken not to be able to be there at the moment with my family and friends, uh, and I know I'm not alone, so a big mihi atu, kia koutou, uh, all of you who are in those situations in these times. I also acknowledge our dead, our dead of recent times, uh, of uh, long ago, the centuries, the decades, our dead of the ages, may they guide us, and I acknowledge you and thank you the living who are sharing this with all of us today. Thank you to Red Room Poetry uh, for helping us launch your Poetry Month, inviting us to be here. I'm going to read from my book Funk House uh, from Victoria University Press, a little fano of poems called The Narcissist Suite. Enjoy. Narcissist at lunch. Sunshine writes itself in the crockery, now I'm in the building. Sinks and cisterns play tunes that I wrote in my happening head. Traffic is me, even Sappho is me. Rad snapshots of me make the mags wing off shelves. License plates are me, pirate flags feature me, and my inspiring piracy. Leaves on those trees float like silk napkins towards me. Even my own fingers, yes, even my fingerprints want my autograph. Narcissist alone. Whatever position I lie in, 
becomes me. I pour at me. I bow my own string at a pitch, sing feverish in my own sweet ear. I wish on myself, frisk myself, whisking my whites with my coloreds all sudsy. Wait for me, wait for me, adore me in catechisms, wade through my patchy fishes, make parables praise me, engage all your gears for me, pour for me, pour for me. Narcissist advice column. Pepper blacks the pan, so never shake it near me. Wait for the flagrant animation in my bed base, in mountain situations, sleep swaddled, wake ecstatic, my frantic menus in your mind. I taste of them all. Refuse to refuse me, waste your time on my errands, squeeze your lime on my lemons, turn up wearing the whole bird, not just the feathers. Kia ora. Kia ora. My name is Nina and I'm a poet from Aotearoa currently living in the UK. And the poem that I'll read is called Sonnet with Particles of Gold. And it's from my collection Magnolia Mulan, published by Seraf Press. Sonnet with Particles of Gold Today scientists discovered the origins of gold. The sound of egg noodles crisping up in the wok. The garden carpeted in kofai petals. The way my phone corrects romati to rainstorm. The day after my grandmother died was white gold in colour. A star explodes and wings are found among the debris, along with pieces of a character I never memorised, our only name for her, poor, a woman beneath a wave. Drift, she mouthed softly in English. What is drift? My mother translates into her language, not one of mine. I try to make myself remember by writing poor over and over on squares of paper covering the walls so I am surrounded by the women and the water radicals they hold close. The tips of waves touch me in my sleep. Hi, my name's David Stavanger. I'm fortunate to be one of the co-producers of Poetry Month here at Red Room Poetry. And uh, when Annie and I were putting together uh, this initiative, one of the things we really wanted to do is have a, a regional focus and do an event that reflects the strong bonds uh, between Aotearoa and Australia and hence this showcase uh, here. And again, huge thanks to the uh, New Zealand's um, Phantom National Poetry Day, which partly inspired Poetry Month over here, and to the Ockham uh, Book Awards for supporting this and co-presenting this event. I'm going to be introducing some of the Australian, or so-called Australian, um, poets uh, that uh, you're going to see uh, during this showcase. And first up, we're starting with two of Australia's leading contemporary poets, both have won the Prime Minister's Award for Poetry, uh, first up, we have the amazing Omar Seker uh, with a poem called Context in a Broken Duplex, an amazing commission that came out of Poetry Month. And then another commission, new, a new poem from Sarah Holland Batt, uh, again, one of our leading critics, um, academics and poets. Enjoy these two. Salamu alaikum. My name's Omar Seker. And I am reading my poem, Context, in a Broken Duplex. Tensions are escalating. Mow the grass down. Stretch past pain to find poetry. The way home. Pen the past to find home. Write even the rain. Israel. Ghost nation stains the orchards. 
is rage enough to sustain a whole nation? A dream of Palestine, free, alive. Pull the line toward life. Ask the dreamer who gave the order, who profits from slaughter, to make a border, make a slaughter. O oh, history, O oh, language, burst without love. With love only, gauge the story. I said with love. Listen, from the river to the sea. People riven from homeland, list in grief. Ten sons ululating. Mothers in the grass. Hi, I'm Sarah Holland Bat. I'm coming to you today from Tarabul and Yagara lands, and I'll be reading my poem Empires of Mind, written for Poetry Month. Empires of Mind. Beside the fountain's troop of sun bleached rubber ducks, in the gardens, under a shade cell. My father is crying about Winston Churchill. Midway through a lunch of cremated schnitzel, spoon fed by the carer with the port wine stain. My father is crying about Winston Churchill. In the night, he cries out for Winston Churchill. During his morning bath, he cries for Winston Churchill. When the nurse does up his buttons, he will not stop his weeping. When the therapist wheels him to Tuesday piano, my father ignores the Mozart and cries for Winston Churchill. He cries not like a child seeking absolution, not like the mourner or the mourned, but free and unconstrained as one who has spent a long time denying an urge and is suddenly giddy and incontinent in his liberation. The cleaners are unmoved. The woman who brings his hourly cup of pills is bright as a firework and goes about her round with the hardness of one who has heard all the crying in the world and finds in that reservoir nothing more disturbing than a taps dripping drumbeat in a sink. But the night supervisor is frightened in the early hours when the halls ping with the sharp beep of motion sensors and my father's crying. His longing for silence is fierce and keen as a pregnant woman's craving for salt and fried chicken as my father's crying for Winston Churchill. And the women in their beds call for it to stop like a Greek chorus, croaking like bullfrogs each to each in the dark, unsettled, loud, insatiable. The unutterable fear rippling through them like a herd of horses apprehending the tremor of thunder on a horizon they cannot see but feel. Next we're going to be hearing from a very special guest, the current New Zealand Poet Laureate, David Eggleton. David's going to be reading from his collection titled The Conch Trumpet, which was put out by Otago University Press. And following on from David, we'll be hearing from Jackson Newland. Um, Jackson won the Jesse Mackay Prize at uh, the Occam's this year with their collection, I Am a Human Being, which was published by Compound Press. Let's hear from David and Jackson. Kia ora. My name is David Eagleton. I am the uh, Poet Laureate of Aotearoa, New Zealand from 2019 to 2022. This poem, uh, Rakaia, 
is taken from my collection, the conch trumpet. Rakaya. Dark feather of the rain bird, Riro Riro, sweeps over the ranges, bringing watercolours as the facets of ridges ripple with snow melt and each angled rock face spawns waterfalls, clear threads woven into a youthful stampede of spring creeks that pull apart to bolt through bush, so spiral, pearl and globe boulders and jostle back together, forming a restless, racing torrent that collects brisk water, slow water, slack water, twirly gig pools, travelling these ribbons and vines into a river strand, descending the mighty spine of the Southern Alps and gathering in the flurries of many tributaries until the Rakaia springs out of the mountains, a wily and seasoned campaigner meandering in lacy loops and twirls through channels, the gravity of gravels, a growl in the river's throat. Rakaia, visible portion of a continuous seepage, pulsing subterranean to the sea, flicking braids, the gliding pulse of its groundwater going strong. Kia kaha. Thank you. Kia ora koutou. My name's Jackson Newland, and as part of Red Room's Poetry Month, I'm going to read a poem from my book, I'm a Human Being, which won the Best First Book of Poetry Award at the 2021 Ockham Book Awards. Um, I'll just start by acknowledging all the mana whenua of Te Whanganui Atara. Uh, sovereignty was never ceded, and I'm reading this poem on colonized land. This poem is called I'm a Fireman. I'm a fireman. I led the fireman. I said firemen. The fireman fired, then lead flew through the politician's eyelids. Survivors dialed for policemen. We heard sirens. My fireman and I fled from a herd of policemen. This was tiring. We said, please policemen, we are firemen. They said, try again. We replied, we're on the same side, I think. They replied with silence. We replied by firing. They replied by firing. We replied by firing. They replied by dialing for backup. We replied by reloading. They replied by hiding. We replied by finding them. They replied by bargaining. We replied by firing. They replied by surrendering. We replied with violence. They replied by dying. We replied by arriving early at the funerals and holding jars up to their ex-wives' eyes, collecting tears to fight fires with. Thank you. These next two poets I can only describe as poetic fire. I think there are certain poets that not only focus on their own practice, but part of their practice is giving to the community itself and creating platforms for others and both of these do that very much in their in their practice and being first up is the legendary Pio um, look up his work if you don't know it uh, anarchist philosopher one of the most significant voices really to come out of uh, so-called Australia in, the, in, in, in a contemporary setting uh, this is a new commission called Slavery. And following Pio is the director of the Red Dirt Poetry Festival in Alice Springs. Um, incredible spoken word artist and a poet that really publishers need to get a collection out with Laurie May. Uh, this is called, the poem you see from her is called Glad Rap is Death and Everything is on Fire, which seems appropriate for the times we're in. Slavery. 40 million people worldwide in 2019 were subjected to some kind of slavery. 61% of them were used in forced labour. 25% of them 
were children, mostly in the private sector, and 38% of them were in forced marriages. You were given, we were given, we're being given, you'll be given, you were bidden, they were giving, I was hidden, we were being bidden, they were bidding, you were being bidden, they are bidding, they will be bidding, you were beaten, I was hidden, it was forbidden, you were forbidden, we were forbidden, we will be beaten, you will be given, I was given, I was beaten, I was growing, we were growing, they were beating, you were hidden, you were being beaten, I was bidden, you were given, I was beaten, you will be given, you were bidding, you, you were holding, they are holding, they were beaten, you were beholden, I was being beaten, I was broken, I was being broken, I was broken, I'll be broken, I'm being broken, you'll be broken, you'll be sold, I'll be sold, you'll be sold, they are selling, they are bidding, we're being sold, I am being sold, I was sold, you were sold, we're being sold. They are selling. I was there. I was listening. I saw them selling. I saw them bidding. They were listening. I was listening. They were bidding. You were silent. I was silenced. I was beaten. You were being beaten. I was bent and bleeding. I was bleeding. I was frozen. You were holding. I was holding. You were frozen. I was frozen, they were bidding, you were being bidden, they were bidding, I was being beaten, you were being beaten, I saw them, I saw their pictures in the archive, there. Poetry educated me, it gave me a place to exist, it gave me access to a community, it gave me time. It made me sane. I could exist in it forever, like mathematics. Poetry incorporates the whole body. The problem is most people think it only occupies the brain, and if they have to, the mouth. They rarely include the ears. As Nietzsche once said, thinking involves the muscles. My struggle in poetry, it's a somehow come to terms with the sheer volume of material bombarding me, to somehow crush it into a small ball of language. This project made me visit some old notes on slavery that I had and to mould it into something that somehow resembled what went through me when I saw that picture. Too often, when a poet wants to write, they rely on their emotions, then forage around for an iPad or pencil and begin to write. The problem with that is that most of what comes out seems to be far too familiar and all look alike. From my perspective, don't start with the emotions. Start with a reservoir of language and out of that, construct whatever it will allow you to construct. And nine times out of ten, you'll say what you wanted to say. I don't know how to write anymore. I don't write anymore. I'm not sure if writing has become a luxury falling wayside to practical things like get up, wash hair, get to work by 9am, leave at 5pm, start second job, side hustle, bring in money, eat, 
shit, get fat, stop fucking your husband, you're both fat now, and you work until midnight every fucking day. Wine, wine down, drink more wine, deal with 20-somethings telling you about coping mechanisms and active relaxing, boomers telling you you're not frugal like they're out there churning butter. Churn your butter before you talk to me. Trust fund babies share housing, dumpster diving, telling you that you're now bougie like they've known anything different. Safety nets open up lifestyles you never thought possible. While Gen X men tell you over and over again how much they hate their kids, hate their kids, hate their kids, before asking, when are you going to have kids? When are you going to do it? Have kids. Everyone's having kids these days. There's nothing else left for it. Got to have kids and send them to Steiner so they can learn how to churn butter. We'll beat the apocalypse if we all recycle. While Gen X, Gen Z women keep asking, how do you make beeswax wraps? Beeswax wraps are the future. Glad wrap is death. Glad wrap is death. Glad wrap is death. Send your kids to school with their beeswax wrapped peanut free, gluten free, vegan sandwich. The ocean is on fire. The rivers are on fire. Everything is on fire all the fucking time. Fuck your beeswax wraps. Fuck your poetry. Fuck your memory. Fuck your identity. Everything is a luxury. Get up, work, eat, shit, eat shit. It's all designed to keep you compliant, screaming down the keys of a keyboard, taking on memes as identity, taking on pseudoscience as the Bible, leaning on the Bible in defiance, using religion to keep xenophobia sidelined, hiding behind national identity, listening to marketing executives disguised as world leaders espouse national exceptionalism, dressed up, dumbed down, in a plaid shirt and a Kubra. Clancy the fucking underwhelm over here just told us to ignore medical science. Too much in common with flat earth societies, sharing debunked philosophies as accuracies. I'm not a microbiologist, but let me tell you about these three things I just read on the internet. That's not a meme, that's an infographic. Maybe if I just turned the news off, it'd all go away. And I could write poetry again. Maybe one day. Next up, we'll be hearing from another um, Occam Awards finalist, Muhammad Hassad. Muhammad will be reading from their collection titled National Anthem, which was put out through Dead Bird Books. And following Muhammad, we will be hearing from the one, the only, the winner um, of the Occam Awards, the poetry uh, section for 2021, the first Pacific woman ever to win this award, uh, Tusiata, Tusiata Ravia. What an amazing wahine you are, Tusiata. And um, the Savage Colonizer book is a testament to your strength, your vitality, and your fierceness. Everything that you are has been put on the page, and all of those who read it love this collection. If you haven't already read the Savage Colonizer book, I strongly recommend that you head over to the Victoria University Press website and order a copy through them. Or why not head down to your local bookstore and ask them to order one in or get your library to get one in. Whatever, however, whatever means you get this copy, make sure you read it. The Savage Colonizer book is um, a transformative and very powerful collection of works. Thank you so much for writing this collection to Seata and the biggest congratulations for writing this work. So now let's hear from Muhammad and to Seata. Kia ora everyone. Salaamu Alaikum. My name is Muhammad Hassan and I am a writer and a poet from Auckland, New Zealand. I am really excited to be invited to be a part of the Red Rooms Poetry Month this year. I will be reading a piece from my collection, National Anthem, which was uh, shortlisted in the 2021 New Zealand Ockham National Book Awards, among some of my favorite uh, people and poets. And this poem is called, And Before That We Were Stars. Can you please look at this poem and tell me if it's good? It's for my fiance, she's really far away. I want to say how I feel, but my English is limited. Can you read it? She works retail most nights, closes up shop late, and I can't study anymore. Since my mother moved back to Yemen, I am working six days a week driving buses. I want to make her feel special, you know? She'll be here in two months. 
And we've been stretching words like this for years, making bridges out of paper, folded like passports, like sailboats, floating into the sky. Have you ever tried to fold your heart into an envelope? She's got a green card and works most days and lives in North Carolina. We Skype and I read her poems, the sentences crack, her eyes whisper, you're a poet, you believe in eternal love, right? Last night she was here, we didn't sleep crying. The travel document they gave her at the border is expiring, are they going to let her back in? They won't let us stay in New Zealand. She has no passport. Will they let me into America? We were born in different refugee camps, but walk past the train tracks in Morningside and remember the same smell. The curtain air, the turquoise governments perched on our shoulders waiting, does that count as a visa? Can you build a house out of love if there is no soil? And what if we never do? Thank you. 250th anniversary of James Cook's arrival in New Zealand. Hey James. Yeah, you in the white wig in that big endeavour. Sailing the blue, blue ocean like a big asshole. Fuck you, bitch. James, I heard someone shoved a knife right up into the gap between your white ribs at Kealakekua Bay. I'm gonna go there, make a big makahiki luau, cook a white pig, feed it to the dogs and fuck you up, bitch. Hey James, it's us. These days we are driving around in SUVs, looking for you. Or white men like you, who might be thieves, or rapists, or kidnappers, or murderers. Yeah, or any of your descendants, or any of your incarnations, cause you know, hey bitch, we're gonna fuck you up. Tonight, James, it's me, Leilani, Danielle, and a car full of brown girls. We find you on the corner of the justice precinct. You've got another woman in a headlock and I've got my father's pig hunting knife in my fist and we're coming to get you. Sailing round in your resolution, your friendship, your discovery and your fucking free love. Watch your ribs, James. Cause I'm coming with Kalani Opu'u, Kane Kapolei, Kanaina, Kiawe Opala, Kuka Ilimoku, who is a god, and Nua'a, who is king, with a knife. And then, James, then we're gonna fuck you up. For good, bitch. The last two poets I'm going to introduce in many ways aren't, you know, foremost known as poets. And that's what's so great about poetry. Um, there's a lot of people who write in other mediums that are either poetic or are poets in their own right or their work's kind of poetry adjacent. However you see it, that's what Poetry Month's sort of been about. Um, foregrounding all the different types of poetry and the places they happen. First up is Laura G. Mackay, who's now kind of a shared cultural asset between the two countries, I suppose, uh, based, I think, down near Wellington, but um, very much known in Melbourne and over here. Um, 
the animals in that country, her recent novels kind of one in everything. Incredible, incredible book, incredible human being and a really fantastic poet. I know she doesn't see herself that way. This poem we've commissioned is really special. Hope you enjoy it. And to finish off, um, one of our poetry ambassadors this year for Poetry Month, and he's known as so many things, um, comedian, director, playwright, actor, um, sexy as, but also fantastic poet. If, 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 if poetry is about capturing the humanity in us, um, Stephen Oliver does it as well as anyone. His poem, Us Mob, is very special. Tēnā koutou katoa, nā o mai, hare mai, ko Laura Dean McKay toko ingoa. I'm speaking to you from the lands of the Rangatane o Manawatu in Aotearoa, and this is where I wrote this poem. I also gratefully acknowledge the people of Gurnai Kurnai country, Turrbal country, and Wurundjeri country, where I have spent much of my life. Thank you so much to Red Room for commissioning this poem for Poetry Month and Anne-Marie Tafil and David Stavanger for their endless support. This poem is called One Final Word on the Christmas Island Pipistrelle. March, zipped wings, your overnight bag. No sonar nets the sky, by the way, just spread sheets for how does it end? How the fuck do you lose a whole bat species? It's none of my business, not you, not the species profile and threats report, except sometimes I chart your voice in the kitchen, the graphic of love and loss on the cold tiles where I fish serious onions from the sink. And once a, de a decayed banana skin, alive and hand winging, wrapped my fingers in bat. A single message from me, the branch you hung from back then. Lovely specimen, common insect eater, female. I named her Banana. She lasted two days in a box with flies. Your turn. Little bombs, my phone's beat bleak glass. Three weeks, arrived thanks. Rubble between the A and Inks has you fresh off the Christmas Island charter. Sidestepping the detention center and our marriage like you're the whole goddamn Australian government. You eat at a place called Settlement. I wrap the last of your gumboot tea in the distribution map, watch it bleed a new zone through the empty detention, the no species habitat. Two weeks, fine here, pipistrel identified. One week. Fingers on my laptop, how the membranes grow between. Antenna set for the high species habitat zone. I stare into the sink. Who needs eyes, you wrote that once, when microphones bloom so sharp. Extinction does, it turns out, the recorded presence of nothing. If I send this now, close your eyes. Let the message tone echo location, a forest full, or at least two bats instead of one. Sad mob. Down mob. Hurt mob. Sorry mob. Tired mob, drained mob, used mob, weary mob, taken mob, forced mob, lost mob, stolen mob, teased mob, tormented mob, bully mobbed, mocked mob, refused mob, abused mob, accused mob, unamused mob, disrespected mob, exploited mob, Disjointed mob, disheartened mob, disillusioned mob, ignored mob, unassured mob, flawed mob, dispossessed mob, unaddressed mob, invaded, underrated, frustrated mob, persistent mob, resistant mob, defiant mob, survivor mob, we ancient mob, we cultured mob, we proud us mob, proper loud us mob, we cheeky mob, we laugh us mob, we walk us mob with ancestral mob, they guide us mob with their spirit mob to remind us mob the truth of mob. We wonderful, beautiful, sensational, incredible, exceptional, custodial, our ritual, traditional, influential, identifiable. We pivotal to the spiritual that's impenetrable, it's inevitable, our ancestral is honorable, impeccable, cultural magical, immeasurable, 
and controllable, unstoppable, unbelievable, unforgettable, unavoidable, unmistakable, undeniable, uncontainable, rotational, is foundational, generational, inspirational, indestructible, hard and possible, love so capable, made invisible, standing tall for all, never feeling small, heed an ancient call, aboriginal. Big thanks to everyone that has been a part of this very special lineup. Um, and a special thanks to Tusiata Avia for sharing her incredible poem uh, from her winning collection, The Savage Colonizers Book. Congratulations, Tusiata. Um, next, we have uh, a special treat. It is a, uh, a suite, a poem called A Water Suite, and it's written. Um, in the spirit of Fenona Tanga, so in the spirit of kinship and connection. Um, a fair Trade has been a beautiful project as part of Red Room Poetry's Poetry Month. Um, there have been six pairs collaborating, six paired poets collaborating, um, who have generated some incredible uh, work, co-woven work. Um, and what we wanted to share with you tonight was the work that Anahira Gilday and Evelyn Araluen co-wrote. Um, their piece is called A Water Suite and it's really special. I um, am so excited and so proud um, to be sharing this with you. Enjoy. Indiwala. I'm coming to you from the lands of the Wurundjeri peoples of the Kulin Nation and want to pay my honour and respect to their ongoing care and custodianship of their country. My name is Evelyn Araluen and we are here with Red Room Poetry as part of the Fair, Pro Fair Trade Project for World Poetry Month. Tēnā koutou katoa, he uriahau no Ngāti Tukurihe, ko Anahira Gilday tō kuingoa. Um, Kia ora, my name is Anahira Gilday um, and I am here on the beautiful whenua of Aotearoa, uh, specifically in Te Whanganui Atara, which is at the bottom of the North Island. Kia ora. <clears throat> Ocean. Saltwater. Waiti. Mulitani. Where I'm from, the sand is cold at night, the shells empty. Grey clouds scudding like the Iriwaru, the spirit voices on the shore. Tender salt, gentle rush of foam. No explorer can hold enough breath for where I'm from, fathoms and fathoms deep. I have heard, I have danced narrative after narrative. I've heard it sung, have done the singing. Our shadows are nuclear, our gods can swim. Never turn your back on the ocean. I hear this every time I have salt water up my nose, down the back of my throat, making me cough. Every time I have sand in my togs or socks, every time I place the smallest of cat's eyes in my pocket and whisper, Karakia, I hear my mother. Fear, fear. Not as tremor, but as the roar of a wave. Never turn your back to things that swallow. Sea, midden, archive, men, or the women they hollow. Matariki is an internal time of year when the bounty for the year is told by the brightness and sureness of the sky siblings. When those who have passed in the year gone are swept up by the great waka, kua pitsu rangitia made stars. It is cold, time for gatherings by fires and sharing stories. The time that the sun shacks up with his winter wife, Hini Takurua, Hini Raumati is the summer one. This is an arrangement the women had. Half a year off is genius and sustainable. Now is the time for Garawa to remind the sea of the song that made it it's time for us to sing shore to shore. In the summer of my always childhood, the beach's hot sand on fire. During the day, we went to collect shellfish with our toes or check nets 
We didn't go to lie on towels nor cover ourselves in coconut. I sent messages across the ocean stuffed into Coke bottles. I wrote, I'm being held captive in a concrete tower in Foxton. Send help immediately, Aotearoa, 1989, because I believed in story. I believed someone might get them. I did, and I wept for you. Those at Tangi speak often of the tides, of the waves that come. When my son died, we wrote, go. The evening tide is for you, the morning tide is for me. The Tungaingai, a precipice. There's only so much we can carry, only so much before we sink. The sea has been taken from us before and it remembers the pain of spilling across dry earth. The wake of the waters that bleed on the stone, the song scraping ashen heels across dust and salt, the story it had to carry for our own end, it remembers and will not forget. Two friends tried to die by sea. Neither succeeded, one because of the luck of a passerby, one because her body refused to stay down no matter the intoxicant. Only so much and never enough. When I was alone and contemplating death, its expanse a constant scream. I used to go to the shoreline, take stance and debate the ocean. Come for me, I say. And, and so? I heard you. Did you hear me sing back? This is the sadness our mothers must have felt. Sadness that likes to dress as resentment. Grief, the waters of the earth speaking to us by the moon. River. Freshwater. Waita. Warangari. Stars, 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 Palanyonaila, Yingla, Doganda. The river, Milky Way, runs between the mountains. Stars, stars, stars. After grief, I made art. The awa I whakapapa to is wide and generous. Her hips, slow moving pockets for children to jump into when they've been told not to. It is said that water can carry away grief. It can take your story and cleanse. It is said my river was a secret, a brown coil snaking around the colony, filling the soil with rich minerals to sow the land. It is said my river brimmed and surged at their impudence, swelling the field and crop. The Story of a New Zealand River by Jane Manda in 1929, a settler frontier kind of story. Jane had to be offshore, like Catherine Mansfield. They had to leave the hostile and unkempt lands of their New Zealand, send stories back from the various Englands of the world, our native scenery, so lush and rapey. Stars and rivers in conversation, a story they were too loud to hear. But this is designated Māori land, you know. The Fano walk her skirts and pick up litter. The elders post on the Hapu Facebook page about who has been abusing our whenua, who has been disturbing our waterways, what little shits have been having late night parties down near the waterhole. Was it you, Ekari? Bloody well was, and don't you lie to me. Tell your kuretake mates, dirty someone else's awa. No fucking respect. No respect. They poison and drain. They treat rivers like the family they never honour, like a sickly child to be seen and never heard. No respect, no honour, no justice, no peace. The moderators try to tell the komatua, this is not a phone, it's forever, this water is not water. But they just keep shouting at their moko over the internet, someone will remove their posts within about 30 minutes. Witnessing time, Witnessing generational shift. They act as if the river is not the most honoured rememberer, as if it has forgotten its own power to drown. I stood in the flowing water of the awa and said my story to her. She, the cold, fresh fun of the cousins downstream, 
She the place you're allowed to wash your body if you have to, but only there. Further, she is food, the cress in her shade, the tuna burrowed into her sides, the e nanga running and running, though there are less of us now. I stood with her frozen at my ankles, my story leaping out of me into her, onto her. We cried together a single hour. Then I drew a Modi stone, the stone she gave me, the stone after I gave my story. It is shaped like a palm-sized weapon. Given, not taken. They say no river can be stood in twice, but they don't know how those rivers know us. How they swell cold and frozen round our legs, murmuring their memories of our mothers bathing us at the banks. What ancestors of mine previously gave the Awa their story, whose echoes are still in this small rock? Time is compressed. We, me, more, bent over in the cold shallows to offer the suite of emotions we call story. The eye blinking in the river above, the ancestors stirring in the basins and caverns below. Every echo, every warning, every horror we could imagine, but above all, the greatest love to be the vein that feeds us. The river itself can tell the story, teach us how to read it, how to see the speed of the water at bends, how to watch the direction and few of the birds, how to call river. How to call star, how to call home. Take my story. River, take my story. River, my story. River, my solace. River, my sorrow. Think of all the rivers that white men have stood in, boot first, and claimed. Balan yonala, gila, aduganda as it will after they drown. Why hōhonu? Deep water. Te riri o te moana. When you're in inclusion, exclusion, when you're in deep, you are in trouble. In te o o te moana, the deep, soft swell of the ocean, your raft. What happens when you fall into somewhere you didn't belong? When gargantuan colonial arms lift you, congratulate you. They nod and say, yes, yes, bring your diverse friends, their communities. We must have communities. Tautoko, tautoko, wonderful, wonderful. They clap their gargantuan hands and... I don't know when I first learnt the fear, but feel it heavy at the base of my spirit belly. Like my shame has decided it would be best, I think, and is filling itself for the fastest descent. Kua mōhiotia. You sink in your stomach because you know you are a puppet now. Fuck it. You can pretty much see dollar signs in their eyes and you've signed a contract and you're about to become a sellout, though that was never your fucking intention. And? And, and so... They searched the desert for an inland sea and were an immemorial too late. Now we are beached at the shore, gasping heavy through bleeding mouths, our skin drying and cracking as clay. Actually, you're not. That's ridiculous. You can fight back from inside the gargantuan buildings with their gargantuan mouths and... And? Hunger. You can make real change. You can do good. You can decolonize. You're called to this work. This is the work. This is real. You push back, hold meetings, do partnership. Fuck. You know it's hard. Some days you cry. And and most days my body is turning itself out for the salt. Your world can be undone in a second. Because how the fuck did you become spokesperson for all Māori, random indigenous fawiwi, political agitators, blah, 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 blah. And how do you get out of it? Make it stop. Step down. You don't want a platform. You're terrified. And and most days I am afraid of drowning, but some I am afraid of rising for air. Gargantuan is a measurable size. All your self-scrutiny, 
and moralizing and policing as like tiny dots on tiny. Too much is a measurable weight. Too much of history to forget, to forgive. Too much of lonely to accept the hand. And what if I was not what was wanted? What if this was never the path? But sometimes you hear the echoes of sea creatures in music, youth whales practicing their deep songs in plain sight, swept up in some zeitgeist moment. You taught me not to believe in moments, but believe in work, the muscle memory of getting up and trying again, the refusal to give in to the deep. That's what it feels like and it's good and righteous. It feels like breaching, but the dark is still beneath. When you're in deep, you're all in, everything at stake. Here's where you make decisions. To stop selling our intellectual property in exchange for that gargantuan applause, stop it. If they take our knowledge and try to use it, fuck them, ignore them, fuck them. I've learned how to make promises in names, in deep breaths, at river banks, in cups of tea and the clasp of a hand. But also, could you please not put it up for sale to the highest bidder offering cash or Pākehā status or both, since they're basically synonymous? We shouldn't linger on what we've lost, but we shouldn't fill those gaps with the weapon that took it from us. Oh, shit. Is that insulting? I don't mean it at all. And my partner is white, so I'm basically one of you. Friends, hashtag Tiriti Partnership Goals. My lover is not from here ancestral. And what I fear is the sea rising and the land not wanting him to stay. When you're in is when you've made the above decision. Some kinds of fear are warranted. The water has so much to take. Kia ora. We'll go on. Thank you. Thanks so much for tuning into this Australian New Zealand showcase co-presented with the Phantom New Zealand National Poetry Day and the Ockham New Zealand Book Awards. May there be more uh, collaborations like this. Um, both regionally and globally, you know, poetry is part, part of everything and everyone. Have a great uh, National Poetry Day tomorrow too.